Hello, everybody. You are listening to FAU Our Radio. My name is Jacob Kelly. Thank you for tuning back into JK Productions. Thank you to those listening in on. Sorry, one moment. Sorry about that. Some technical difficulties here for a second. Thank you for tuning back into JK Productions. Thank you to all those listening live on my YouTube channel and Spotify, both JK Productions. In today's episode, we are going to be going over what was a busy week for both the baseball and basketball teams. We will not be having an episode next week, which will be the would have been the episode before NFL free agency. I will be having an episode on my own personal platforms. However, here on FAU Owl Radio, we will be not be live. So today we are going to go over the quarterback carousel and the free agency carousel as a whole uh, in the NFL. Then we'll get into some basketball, talking about the Miami Heat continuing their hot start of the year, talking about the Lakers' struggles, the Knicks' struggles. And finally, like I say this every single week, finally we'll get into a little bit of soccer. But today I do have a very special guest bringing back on the show for the first time since uh, he left this good campus here. Jacob Brown, how are you doing, sir? First time back here in the L Radio studios, and I am. Uh, it's nice to be back. Weird not being stupid being here, but it's it's nice to be back. Yeah, man. It was just what six months ago. I mean, six months, like three months ago. Yeah. I was seeing the exact chair you were in. I you were sitting the exact chair I'm in. You know, you, I was gonna bring that up. I was like, I was gonna say I got my chair now, but I was like, there's like four chairs in that room, so I could have sat in any of the four for any show. So, uh, you know, all the chairs are yours, Jacob. Yes, the, the, the keys have been handed to me. Adiel was joking that you, you, sent, you sent a text message to me to let him know that you will be demanding pay yeah. for tonight's game, which you'll be hearing both Jacob Brown and Jacob Kelly, the Jacob Telecast, back in action for the first time since we commentated that football game together. But you, uh, you let Adiel know you're going to have to receive some pay. And Adiel did say that he did replace you with somebody better. So I'm just – not my words, Adiel's words. What do you have to say about that? Well, I think we're going to have to get to the negotiating table and, and hash this out. I mean, I'm the one who brought you here. I mean, <laughs> you have deep mouth with this, Jacob. I don't know what's going on. Hey, I am just the middleman. I am, uh, I am translating. I'm, I'm, I'm putting things forward. What he said to you. So don't, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just repeating what Adiel said. But like I mentioned today on FAUOurRadio.com and live on the FAU Our Radio YouTube channel, as I mentioned, you'll be listening to Jacob Brown, Jacob Kelly on the call for the start of the Michigan Wolverines FAU Owls baseball series, which is going to be taking place over two games. Starts today at 630. We have a second game tomorrow, which you, Jacob Brown, are also going to be part of. I will not be a part of that game tomorrow. But today's first game will be 6.30, and the basketball, oh, sorry, the baseball team comes in after a pretty hot start. Last week's games, the, there, was, there were two and two, starting which the one game play in, uh, or playoffs playing uh, the University of Miami down in Miami on Wednesday, lost that game 9-1. to one. However, came back here at home and took two out of three against the University of Delaware on Friday, losing 8-5, to five. Saturday 1-8-3, to three, and Sunday 1-5-1. One, on Sunday, Lowen, McGran, DeBose all had RBIs to help us move forward with a victory there. Like I said, sitting at five and three. And Jacob, you and I will be on the cast tonight. What do you expect from this FAU Wild baseball team? Uh, well, they don't listen. I mean, Michigan Wolverines coming in here tonight. I've been here obviously for three or four years, and we have not had a Big Ten team like this come in. Minnesota came in here to open the season. Now we have Michigan coming in here, in here tonight. This is huge for FAU. If they can show, because they, they took the series against Minnesota, that's a Big Ten baseball team, and now they have a two game set to, uh, starting tonight against Michigan. This could really put FAU baseball on the map to show, you know, if you look at the regular seasons in the past, and they, they have these big wins throughout their seasons, but they're never able to put it through for an entire season and compete with the big dogs in the end. But they have their wins throughout the season, like last year, you beat Miami. They beat UF, and you're sitting there saying, hey, they're beating these big teams. They might be able to do it in Omaha in a few months. And then FAU throughout the season, things just kind of started to tumble down, and it didn't get to that point. And if I'm looking at this year, this would be the game to where you start that. You can say, hey, we took the series against Minnesota. Yeah, we dropped one against Miami, but they come to our house later in the season. And now you get Michigan in here, and I think a split would even be a great thing to come out of this series. Uh, but if you can take two out of two against a Big Ten baseball team after beating another Big Ten team, 
That's a big statement for FAU baseball. It certainly would be, and especially you look at the team of the magnitude of your University of Michigan. Let's just say the football team or the basketball team were taking on the University of Michigan. Even got, like you said, one win splitting the series there would be huge for both the basketball and the football team. So FAU being put on a big stage here, having great opportunity early on in the season to prove themselves and prove themselves for the rest of the season. As like you said, the there is hopes of Omaha this year. There is hopes of something bigger and better than just the Conference USA, which FAU has done a really good job at dominating in recent times. So hopefully we'll see the FAU Owl baseball team take care of business first and foremost tonight and then going on later into the season. Moving on to FAU basketball. FAU basketball had two games last week, and one of which didn't necessarily go our way. First of which, going up to Virginia to take on Old Dominion University. Old Dominion, a team that on the other side of things, when Old Dominion was down here, FAU took care of business. However, falling 70 to 51 was not a good showing for the FAU basketball team. Big man Vlad Golden led the way with 16 points on the team, and Old Dominion forward uh, Kalu Izepki led the way for Old Dominion with 17 points. The score was mostly level at halftime. However, in the second half of the game, Old Dominion's shooting really came out and outscoring FAU 34 to 19. The second half was too much to overcome for our FAU basketball team. And then following that game, FAU traveled just a little bit south to Charlotte, where we saw a nice change. FAU got the victory there 74 to 69. Guard Elijah Martin led the way, 16 points, seven assists. Michael Forrest also had 14 points and four assists. On the other side for, for University of Charlotte, guard Jameer Young led the way with 20, 26 points. And FAU didn't really have an answer for him. And how could you? He is the second leading scorer in Conference USA, averaging 19.9 points, just under 20 points. So he was able to get his. However, FAU did a good job at stopping the rest of the Charlotte University squad there. And now we have two big games to finish out the regular season for FAU, both of which coming against FIU, both of which will be on ESPN+. Plus. The first of the two games will be this Thursday, 7 p.m. at FIU, like I said, on ESPN+. Plus. And then the finale, the home finale, will be this Saturday, 2 p.m. against FIU. And we will have that live for you here on FAU Owl Radio. Myself, Jacob Kelly, will be live on the call there and Alicia Hayes will be making her first appearance on the basketball telecast to finish the season, to finish the regular season for our FAU Owl. So hopefully we get a big victory there that could really help us help propel us into the conference USA tournament. And it really could go either way for FAU. FAU is currently sitting at third in conference USA East. However, teams above them, there's only one game in between us and second place, but there's also only two games between us and fourth place. So depending how things go in these next couple games, it could be really bad or it could be really good for FAU. FIU comes in 15 and 14. FAU is currently at 16 and 13. And FIU has not had a good time so far in Conference USA, currently sitting at 5 and 11. So with these two games to go in conference play in the regular season, hopefully FAU can take care of business as we move forward into the Conference USA tournament. Moving on to some football. And, man, is, is there's only been one show, I think, that I haven't started that with. Because, come on, Jacob, you and I, we're football fans. You're, you're more of a baseball fan than I am, certainly. But after that, we're both football fans. And that's that's what we got to talk about most, right? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, it, we're, we're about to get into free agency season, draft season. This is time to start talking about what guys are going yeah, and it's it's not necessarily been a good time for you and I as fans. The, the Giants last year were plagued with injuries, statistically the most injured roster of the entire NFL last year. The Miami Dolphins, well, how can I paint the picture? One and eight to start, or sorry, was it one and eight or one and nine to start the year? I forget. It was that, that painful. And then we finally put things together. It looked like we were going to put together a respectable season. And at the end, it was semi-respectable. However... We fire coach Brian Flores, the, the whole fiasco unfolds after that. So I'm sure you and I can't be sitting here with too much confidence right now. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I kind of like the direction the Giants are going in with Brian Cable. I, I mean, like for me as a Giants fan, I'm kind of putting the last 10 years into the back burner. They've been one of the worst, if not the worst NFL franchise over the last 10 years since they won the Super Bowl in 2011. The only successful season was a, random team that made the playoffs and got whooped by the Packers. Uh, that team, I remember that whole season, people were saying, this isn't a real playoff team. They just happen to be 
an 11 win team that got in, they got whooped. We know the whole story with that. Um, but I'm kind of more look, looking forward to the future with this franchise. I think Brian Dable as the head coach, um, you know, the Giants hired him. You know, a lot of people are inferring because Josh Allen, six foot five, 230. Daniel Jones, six foot five, about 25 pounds less. They might be thinking logic wise hey, if we can have that same philosophy that they will use with a 6 5 quarterback uh, a little bit north of us in New York, maybe we can use it uh, with us in New Jersey. So I, I hope that that is the philosophy and that actually works. Um, you know me, I mean, we talked about Daniel Jones a number of times personally. And, you know, I haven't been the most fond of him, but I also think that for this season, he might have to be the option because you look at the quarterbacks that are available, their cap hits are through the roof, and the Giants don't have a roster that I think the quarterback would just magically fix everything else. So, you know, you bring in a Matt Ryan, what's the point of paying him $45 million? He's going to be here for two years, then you got to dump his money, restart again. Um, so I, I think the Giants should see what they have in Jones. Boost up his trade value. If his trade value goes down to zero, then that's the risk that they took, and they'll go to the draft. Uh, but as for the Dolphins, uh, I love their head coaching hire uh, with uh, Mike McDaniel. Mike McDaniel, yeah, I, I love that hire. I mean, CJ, we do the podcast over there. Huge Dolphins fan. That's the guy he was rooting for this entire time. And through his interviews, I really like what he was saying about Tua, about how they're going to make it basically, uh, they're going to facilitate the offense through him. Uh, and that's not what was being done in the previous administration over in Miami. So I think similar situations for us both. Quarterbacks, we might not really like that much, but both of our organizations are saying we need to give them one more shot. And there are two quarterbacks that are very different. Like you just mentioned with Daniel Jones, six foot four, big body, big arm, mobile. Whereas with Tua, you got maybe six foot, weaker arm. Yeah, However, maybe. Maybe six foot, you know, he's not quite Kyler Murray short because that dude is just a little hamster behind his offensive line. However, Tua is by no means one of the biggest men on earth. He doesn't have the biggest arms. He's accurate. He has he does have some some traits that you can build behind with the correct coaching staff. And as you just alluded to with Mike McDaniel, I believe that is something we can build with. This is a guy who was followed Kyle Shanahan around as part of that uh, coaching tree. Yep. And he has really excelled in the running game, which is something the Dolphins have really struggled under Brian Flores. And you can really say the offense as a whole has struggled under Brian Flores. And this is something that you know you see teams do time and time again. You have one philosophy as a head coach that doesn't succeed, even though we could argue back and forth, I'm sure for hours, whether what Brian Flores did was considered a success. I consider it a success. However, I guess, you know, the Dolphins didn't, and we're going to move on now. However, like I was mentioning, you, you go with a defensive-minded coach in Brian Flores. You deem that to be a quote-unquote failure. You you'd often see teams move on to the opposite side of the ball. You bring in Mike McDaniel, someone who's experienced in the run game, developing offensive lines, two things that are very weak on this current Miami Dolphins team. And with Tua, a quarterback that does have his limitations, he's coming from a system where they just got to the NFC Championship game with a quarterback that has a lot of limitations and could be – on the move this off season, which is something we'll get into here in a moment. So we are both in very interesting situations. Our teams, if so choose, could move off their quarterbacks. You know, Jacob, I was saying for the good part of all of last semester that I thought Russell Wilson was going to be the Giants starting quarterback yeah. by the time the regular season came around. That doesn't necessarily look to be, but what we will do for you guys is there's a lot of teams that could potentially look to start with a new quarterback next season. There's, there's guys, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, maybe even maybe even Tom Brady coming back. That could really affect the NFL landscape. Uh, don't, don't let audio hear that one, Tom Brady comes back. I'm not too big of a believer in he will come back. However, it's not entirely impossible that he will. So starting things off, we're going to talk about my Miami Dolphins. And I believe Tua is going to be the guy to come back in Miami. I mean, I was at one point giving up on Tua, but it does seem that the organization is backing him. The new head coach is backing him. And with the right system around him, I do believe Tua can win some games. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I think Tua is the guy uh, from what Mike McDaniel has been talking about. He wouldn't be talking about running the offense through Tua if he wasn't coming back. So it's pretty much a done deal as far as I'm concerned that Tua is going to be there. And I, I, I would be hard pressed for this, this next team, this next guy to talk about. I believe that 
I believe Russell Wilson is going to stay in Seattle, but if I'm the Miami Dolphins, I'm making an effort. I know that McDaniel said what he said. I know the organization is what the, what the, how much they've backed to it and back the fact that he's going to be their starting quarterback next year. I understand they've done all that. If they went out and got Russell Wilson, I'm getting my car. I'm going down to Miami. I'm getting to it. Get in the car, pack your bags. We're going to Seattle. I get to Seattle. Hey, Russ, Ciara, get in the back seat. get the kids. We're going to Miami. I'm doing that in a heartbeat. Bring three, four first round picks, Xavier and Howard to it. I'm bringing whatever they want to Seattle. But I do believe Russell Wilson is going to stay in Seattle. What do you think? Yeah, you know, it's really interesting. I saw a report this morning that said that Russell Wilson, A, is not interested in going to the commanders, uh, which I, I saw that rumor two weeks ago. And I was like, I don't see Russell Wilson leaving Seattle to go to the Dan Snyder hectic situation right now. Uh, that, that's just an unstable situation. So I don't think they're going to be getting one of the frontline quarterbacks. Uh, and we'll get to who they might get to in a second. But uh, I also saw a report that Russell Wilson might not even want to play on the East Coast, uh, which rules out almost every option. So you saying that he might stay in Seattle. Well, you have Pittsburgh that needs a quarterback. You have other teams. The, the Bucks need a quarterback. They're on the East Coast. So to me, if you're saying, okay, Russell doesn't want to play on the East, who's got an open quarterback that's not over there. Well, you have Denver, but they're kind of linked to Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I don't see either Denver going for Russell Wilson or anything like that. It could happen, but you never know, right? I mean, trades happen all the time, but uh, I think it's either Seattle keeps him or he goes to Indianapolis. I think Indianapolis looks at their roster right now and says, we already know they've been pretty public about Wentz possibly not being the guy. Ballard was out doing press conferences today. And he wouldn't say yes or no, which basically means he's being traded. They're moving on from Wentz. And so if you're the Colts, and for the last five years, I swear to God, every year we go in, they're like, the Colts have the best on-paper roster in the league. They have the best linebacking core. Their offensive line is top five. Now they've got Jonathan Taylor, blah, blah, blah. And they don't do anything. And so what's separating them? It's a quarterback because Phillip Rivers and Carson Wentz couldn't do it. And if I'm the Colts, I'm going all out for Russell Wilson give up stock because they have it. They have things that they can give away and still be a damn good roster. And I, I don't think Russell wants to sit in Seattle in what's going to be purgatory, I think, for the next few years. So um, I know you think Seattle very well could happen because it's either Colts or bust if he doesn't want to go to the East Coast for me. If I'm Russell Wilson, I'm doing everything I can to get out of Seattle. Yeah. I have been pounding the table that I think head coach Pete Carroll is terrible. I, I think he should have been fired years ago. I think if you just look at the look at the roster, look at the defense, look at the offensive line, every single year they've gotten worse. Pete's a quote unquote defensive guy, and you see the defense deteriorate year after year. You went from Legion to Boom to whatever that was last year. At one point, halfway through the season, they were on pace to have a record breaking, terrible defense in terms of yards per game, points per game, yards per play. It was ridiculous the pace that Seattle defense was on at one point last year. So Russ is getting no help over there, and he's not really getting any help in the media from his coach and from his organization. The organization seemingly would much rather back this head coach that, again, I'm pounding the table, should have been fired years ago, should have most certainly been fired this last offseason. And they seem to be more supportive of him than the quarterback. I would 10 times out of 10 take Russell Wilson over Pete Carroll and anything else that the Seattle Seahawks can try to provide. But I do believe ultimately he's going to stay there. Russell Wilson doesn't peg me as the type of guy to force his way in a very you know disorganized and really like it would be, it would be a bad breakup. We know that Seattle, as much as they haven't given him much credit, Seattle knows the type of quarterback he is. So they would require a, large sum we saw what they rejected last year from the bears four first round picks and one of those being a pretty decent first round pick so the seahawks are going to demand a large bounty for him i think russell wilson sticks it out another year even though i don't think he should i think seattle's starting quarterback next year will be russell wilson and that moves on to the washington well I almost said the washington football team i'm it's gonna take a while to get that out of my mind i gotta deal with las vegas raiders Los Angeles Chargers and now Washington Commanders. We've we've had too many name changes in the last few years. Yeah, it it it, it it's too much energy for me. I I'm gonna end up calling them 
like three different names. They should have been the Armada. I'm still going to say that. Anything but commander. Yeah. I mean, terrible. I mean, do you see the video of Chase Young, like playing, I think he was playing Madden or something. And they were going over possible. This was like months ago. They were going over possible names and he was grading them like A through F and they brought up commanders and he said F. Oh man. Yeah. Nobody wants the commanders. And then you see their press conference and like everything they did to unveil it. They, they're hearing us. They're hearing the reactions from their own team, like their own fan base that they think it's terrible. But I digress. I watched Pat McAfee's show, and within one minute, he called out that everyone's going to be calling them the commies. So the commies. It's just right there. I mean, mm-hmm. you're giving it to the fans. And with Dan Snyder, the way he's run the, the, the franchise like, pretty much since he gained ownership long ago, he's been a terrible owner. Uh, I mean, some I'm sure some of you heard the story of the, the deeper story of what led to Alex Smith breaking his leg. Basically, the the uh, one the the left guard and Dan Snyder were apparently were talking to the same lady friend. And when Dan Snyder caught whiff of this, had him benched And that game was the game that in that position was the position that. Whoever got through the, the offensive line eventually just snaps Alex Smith's like a tw- leg like a twig. That's just so that that something like that, and you just take a step back, like yeah, imagine you know something as little as that impacts the guy's whole life. Just crazy. And we, as a Dolphins fan, it's been very easy to hate on Stephen Ross recently, firing of firing of Brian Flores and that whole fiasco that unfolded after that. And there's been many reasons. Throughout the years, we've had some disdain for Stephen Ross, but I can confidently say he he at least appears to want to win and care about that at least a little bit. I don't know what Dan Snyder wants. I don't know what his end all be all is. I think he just wants to be. I think he's just a power hungry little man. And for somebody like Russell Wilson, as you mentioned, I don't think that's a situation you want to go into. So Washington, I don't believe is going to have the cream of the crop in their hands. So I believe the Washington Commanders will start week one next year with Jameis Winston. The Saints don't have any money. The Saints currently are negative $42 million uh, over the cap. They freed up some money and people are like, ooh, W move by the Saints. They're still last place when it comes to cap space. So they're not going to be able to resign players like Jameis Winston and Teron Armstead, just like last year. They, they lost so many free agents, uh, one of which being Trey Hendrickson, who went on to the Bengals to play in the Super Bowl. So they're not going to have the money to even sign somebody like Jameis Winston, who could probably resign on a cheap contract. So I think Washington, who needs a quarterback, they've been trying to make it work recently. They, they of course, traded for Alex Smith a few years ago. They tried to run it this year with Ryan Fitzpatrick, got injured week one. So that the season as a whole was really lost for them. Their offense underperformed all year long. So I think they're going to go out and get a quarterback like Jameis who offers, you know, he has a pretty big arm. He played decently well this year before going down to injury. And with that, I do believe they're also going to draft Kenny Pickett behind him to eventually replace him. I think Jameis could be a one or two year contract. Who do you think Washington will be rolling out starting with next season? Someone temporary. It's going to be a fix, like you said. I think they will go to the draft and get something. Well, whether it's Kenny, Kenny Pickett, whether they wait till next year, whatever it is, I think this year's a stopgap. Uh, like I said, with the whole Snyder situation going on, I don't see any top line quarterback saying, you know, I want to put my stock there. I would have said, hey, maybe that means Deshaun Watson's a good idea. Uh, no, you know, <laughs> that a PR nightmare that be to have two guys oh, in the same situation on the same team. That won't happen. So. It really only gives you, okay, will they go for Jimmy G? I don't think so. Uh, So I think it's either going to be Teddy Bridgewater. I think that would fit um, because I think Denver's going to move off him. Um, And then I think Mitch Trubisky would be a good fit in Washington. Uh, We heard today, I've been seeing all over, that he's being viewed as a starting quarterback and that insiders have been talking to GMs about available quarterbacks, and they're talking about Trubisky more than they're talking about the entire class uh, for 2022 in quarterbacks in the draft. So I'm not too high on Trubisky. I never have been. But if he's being valued more than the draft class this year, saying something about the draft class. So um, wherever he goes, good for him. He gets another shot. But, uh, yeah, I think Washington either ends up with Bridgewater or with him. So Trubisky will be coming short along uh, in this list here. However, with Trubisky – or not with Trubisky, with – so I think I flipped those around. Trubisky will be coming on this list very soon. However, Bridgewater, I didn't have on this list at all. And I believe he's going to go to Tennessee. 
And I think he's going to – because we saw with Tennessee, they're not afraid to bring in some competition for their quarterback. That's how Tannehill got there in the first place. So I think Tannehill will stay with Tennessee. However, I do think they could try to bring in a veteran like Bridgewater just to give some competition, see what their options are going into next season. But like I said, I do think Jameis is going to be the Washington starter next year. And the man we were just talking about, Mitch Trubisky, I think the Colts are going to go out and make a move for him. They tried to bring in Carson Wentz last year. Carson Wentz is known for having a big arm. He's athletic, and it clearly didn't work. Mitch Trubisky does offer you athleticism. There is a reason, ultimately, that he was drafted number two overall. He has physical traits. He can. He's somewhat mobile. He has a pretty good arm. And he really wasn't handed a good hand of cards with the Chicago Bears and Matt Nagy. He went up to Buffalo, backed up uh, Josh Allen this year, didn't have a lot of opportunity to see the field. And we know that with Brian Dable, quarterbacks have learned a thing or two underneath him. So I think the value of Mr. Trubisky in this free agency uh, class is warranted. And I think he is going to get his opportunity to start somewhere. Now, a team like the Colts, could look to draft somebody later on in the draft because we know they do not have their first round pick after trading it for Carson Wentz. So they could look to draft somebody in the second, third, fourth round. However, I do think Mr. Bissy is going to be their starting quarterback going to next season. Do you agree? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's just like, I feel like if you, like I said earlier, I mean, if you've got the roster that they have, is Trubisky the answer? I mean, if I'm comparing Trubisky to Wentz, I'd rather have Wentz. Because at least I know Wentz can air out the ball and throw it down the field. Is he going to admit, you know, you watch Carson Wentz through a four-quarter game, you're going, eee, a lot, you know. But at least you know he's going to throw the ball down the field. He also had under 10 picks this year, so it wasn't terrible. He used to have a much bigger problem with interceptions. Um, so it's like, if you're going to move off Wentz, why Trubisky? I feel like he's more limited than Wentz is. I don't know how much more limited he is. He has the ability to move, which I don't believe Wentz has. True. And looking at Carson Wentz this year was a shell of what we saw from him at his – when he almost won MVP, of course, tearing his ACL, and then Philadelphia ends up winning the Super Bowl. Anyways, he was a shell of himself this year. Now you could point that to the receiving cast he had wasn't necessarily the best. Michael Pittman had an outstanding second year. However, outside of that, T.Y. Hilton was built up all year, uh, banged up all year. And he's uh, older. Paris Campbell. Yeah. Like there's, there's not a lot of talent on that receiving core. Uh, I don't even know who their starting tight end is for the Indianapolis Colts. They did not have the best of weapons to throw to Jonathan Taylor stepped up when needed. However, when they needed those last two wins at the end of the year, couldn't get that. And a lot of that is because of Carson Wentz. I would like to see Mr. Risky get another shot. He has the talent. Uh, He's not controversial in any way. He hasn't really gotten injured much throughout his career so far and a place like the Colts who if they can get a quarterback that just provides something something just a little bit of special and he showed flashes of that with the Bears they got they had a few good seasons with Mr. Bisky on the Bears got to the playoffs and I think if he's given another opportunity I don't believe he's going to be a top 10 even necessarily top 15 quarterback yeah. but the Colts have a roster they could win now and if they aren't able to secure a trade by going out and getting Russell Wilson, which would probably require them to give up assets like Darius Leonard or even Quentin Nelson. If they can keep the roster they have now, maybe add a weapon or two and add Mr. Bissy, I think they're certainly a playoff team going into next season. Now the hot topic that is Aaron Rodgers. And before I give my opinion, I'm just going to immediately throw it over to you. Do you think, Aaron, what do you think he's going to do? Do you think he's going to stay? Is he even going to retire? Or if he is to move on, where do you think he's going to move on to? Uh, retirement, no chance. I don't think he's doing that. Uh, I was one of the fools to tune into Pat McAfee last week, thinking that Rogers was going to make an announcement just for him. Nothing. No, nope, not doing it, guys. Um, I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. I, I saw a report this morning. The Packers don't even know. So I, I look at it this way. If Aaron Rodgers wants a cleaner path to the Super Bowl, let's say, I, there's never an easy path. But if you stay with the Packers and they're able to somehow retain Devontae Adams, whether that's a franchise tag or they actually pony up the money and get him, you're winning that division and you have your ticket to the playoffs automatically. If you go to Denver, you have to face Herbert twice, you have to face the Raiders twice, and you have to face Mahomes twice, and then all the other quarterbacks in the AFC that you would have to get through in the playoffs as well. I think Rodgers is smart enough to look at that and say, I'd rather take my chances in the NFC where Tom Brady's probably gone 
Uh, Jimmy G is not going to be on a contender. You're going to have a rookie in Trey Lance over there if they make the playoffs again. So who's he looking at, really? It's Matt Stafford or the Cowboys, really? Are you, are you scared of Dallas? Um, so I think if Rodgers is looking at this, logically, he should stay with Green Bay. I 100% agree. They, if, if, if you look at it just for what it is, the Green Bay Packers have a very good chance of going out next year, getting the number one seed again. That division is very weak. You have the Bears and the Vikings who just fire their head coaches and are going to be rebuilding this season. You have the Lions who are the Lions. They fought hard last year, and they, they put together a much better season than some would have expected to. And considering the circumstances, I would have considered that a good season for the Detroit Lions. However, they still won, what, four games, three, three or four games? Nothing outstanding by any means. So you have a very winnable division. And the conference – you know, you lost to the you lost to the 49ers, which is a really weird game. And to be honest, I would put most of the blame on that game on Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. They had a great first drive, but you saw him playing. I'm going to take a shot at my own guy. You kind of saw him playing like the stereotypical Tua. You know, it was a lot of check downs. Aaron Jones had, I think, like nine catches or something. Uh, it was a lot of just these underneath rounds that didn't look like he wanted to take the chances downfield. It was almost as if he assumed that, getting that first touchdown would win them the game. And obviously it didn't. The special teams uh, unfolded like it did with the block punt, the block field goal. So a lot of the blame is on him. So if he comes out next year and man, if he can just get his head screwed on just a little tighter, I'm not going to say he's like you know, Antonio Brown on, on court. However, there's currently, there's clearly something that goes on with him that he has a, very much a sense of entitlement and doesn't want to really necessarily accept blame. And if he can learn from what happened this in the playoffs this year, as well as in years past, with this Packers team, if they are able to, I, I assume Devontae Adams would be a tag situation because he does. I don't think he wants to run it back with Jordan Love, but Packers do have the opportunity to franchise tag him. So logically speaking, it makes a lot of sense for him to stay with the Packers. But I think he's going, and I think he's going to the Denver Broncos. I think he has made up his mind. Uh, the way he was thanking everybody at the end, you could point to maybe that means retirement. However, the amount he wanted to leave last off season, last off season, they got to the conference championship. They were the number one seed, had a bye. They even won a playoff game, which they didn't do it this year. And even after that, they were on the doorstep of the Super Bowl. He still was saying, nah, I want out of here. To lose like they lost this year, even if it's his fault, but I don't think he'll take, take much uh, credit for that. I do think he's going to force his way out, and I do think he's going to be the Broncos uh, quarterback star next year, which means I think the Packers are going to say, screw it. We draft him in the first-round pick. I think the Packers are going to run it out with Jordan Love. That's a fair point, man. I mean, you look at who the Packers hired. I mean, excuse me, who the Broncos hired. He's going to leave to some familiarity in Denver as well. Um, and we know Aaron Rodgers kind of likes to have his power and his say over what to do. He knows those guys. And I think he would have basically the same situation, the same autonomy that he had in Green Bay over in Denver because of their coaching situation. So I think from that standpoint, it's good for both of them. But again, like we just hashed it out, competitively speaking, he's got a ticket to the Super Bowl in a much more clean way in the NFC. It'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see if it happens in the next two weeks, if this is going to be one of those things that's drawn out. Um, we will see. We will see. And just looking at it for the Broncos, it would not be unlike them. We saw the very yeah. similar move when they went out to get Peyton Manning, albeit a free agent. They would have to give up some assets uh, this time. Well, was it was it free agency? No, they did trade them that time, except it was it was it was a much more calm breakup. The yeah. Colts decided to move off of him and kind of just got what they got uh, in return for him. However, with Aaron Rodgers, you're looking at multiple picks, probably two first rounders, and then some. However, you have the, the team that's that's constructed. It's very similar to what we saw with the Peyton Manning team with a good offensive line, good running game, good young receivers that just need somebody to get them the ball. And on the other side, they have Bradley Chubb. They have Patrick Sertain Jr. They have a young, good defense on that other side, and they're going to be able to go out for agency, spend some money, <laughs> maybe even bring Von Miller back. That'd be funny. He's a free agent. So the, the team itself looks very similar, but the division around them is 
undoubtedly so much different. You have two of the best young quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert. You have the Raiders who, firing their head coach, lost their star receiver to jail. They still made the playoffs. And that division isn't going to get any easier. They now actually have a head coach. Herbert is going to continue to develop. Mahomes and the Chiefs, they just made the conference championship, almost made the Super Bowl, which could have been a fourth year in a row if things had gone differently uh, four years ago in the conference championship against the, uh, against the Patriots. So that division is much different than what Peyton Manning saw. However, I think he's he's got his mind figured out. I think he wants to leave. Another destination could be the Tennessee Titans, which I previously brought up. Um, that is... That does intrigue me, and I'm sure it could intrigue him because that is a much more winnable division, and they did just get the number one seed in the AFC. So that could be a possibility. But I do see him leaving. My best guess is the Broncos, which would then leave Jordan Love to take over the Packers. We'll see what that is. But another young quarterback that I believe is going to get their chance over on the West Coast, Aaron Rodgers' childhood team, Tom Brady's childhood team, and we can talk about that in a second. I think the 49ers – all signs point to them moving off Jimmy Garoppolo. I think everybody with just a pair of eyes and a brain can understand that Garoppolo is all but done as a 49er. They moved up with all those assets to take Trey Lance with the number three overall pick last year. And we're hearing a lot about, oh, Trey Lance isn't ready. He's very unrefined. Hey, thank you. Thank you. He played all right in his two games, but he was – playing just two games. How many quarterbacks have looked great in their first two games where the entire season they've been practicing up to this point with the second stringers, Garoppolo goes injured, gets injured, and I, eh, do what you do. And he played all right. You know, he had a game that was like he had 250 yards, two touchdowns, interception. He showed his athleticism. He showed his arm. He has everything on tape that could make him be a good NFL quarterback. And now they're all saying he's unrefined this and that. I think it's a smoke screen to try to get more back from Garoppolo. And I, it seems like you agree. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, because here's the thing with the, the Garoppolo situation is tough because they kind of, the teams that are interested in the quarterback, some of them are in the NFC. And if you're going to trade Garoppolo, the Bucks might be calling. And so are they going to want to trade Garoppolo within the NFC? I don't think they're, no, I don't think the 49ers think that they're a non playoff team with Trey Lance. And if you give Jimmy G to the Bucks, you've given a quarterback to your contender to a guy that might beat you in the playoffs. So I think that that's why they have to do something like this because they have to put up the stock for Jimmy G. They want to get him into a situation that they want. They don't want to have to deal with him. They don't want that. But could you imagine going to the playoffs next year? First game of the playoffs, Niners are on the road in Tampa with Jimmy G and Jimmy G beat. That's a bad look. So I don't think they want that. And uh, so, yeah, it's a total smoke screen. Um, Trey Lance is the guy. I saw a stat the other day that him and Mahomes in their first two games was almost identical uh, to what they did, not in terms of yards and everything like that, but in terms of passing completion percentage uh, and some advanced stats that the NFL uses. They were very similar in their first opening games. Um, this is a guy with a big arm. He's the dude. Um, and, it, and it also fits, too, because uh, uh, Bruce Arians in his press conference today said, would you get, they talked about the whole Tom Brady thing, and he basically said, if the Bucks." are going to trade Brady, they'd want five first round picks. And so uh, it, it fits with the 49ers wanting to try out Trey Lance because I've heard through little people that Brady might take a year off and then go to San Francisco. And that would allow San Francisco to see what Lance really is in a full 17 game. So I think that's what's pretty much gonna happen if Brady is actually thinking about coming back. Yeah, there's a lot of arguments to be made. I'm sure Adiel, if he's listening to this, would love to see Brady return for another year. Um, I'm not big in the camp that he's coming back. I think he is done. I think it's a lot of people want it to happen. So they're they're using every little piece of evidence that they can to try to reason that he will be coming back. I don't think it's going to be happening. I think Brady's done. The way he was talking at the end of the year, I think he's done. So I think Trey Lance will be the 49ers quarterback and not Tom Brady, just as much as I think the Buccaneers quarterback will not be Tom Brady. And I do think it's going to be Jimmy Garoppolo. Ooh, it, okay. it makes a lot of sense. There's not a lot of options, as we just mentioned, to ship him out uh, out into the AFC. The team we're going to talk about next, it could be the Steelers. However, I do believe they're going in a slightly different direction. However, I think it makes a lot of sense. Garoppolo, very much a system quarterback, was originally brought in to replace Tom Brady. 
And it would be funny to see a trade involved of Garoppolo and Brady, considering where they all were together at one point. Garoppolo has a Super Bowl because of, of Tom Brady. Or I think he has even two, two Super Bowls because of Tom Brady, does he? He never won one, no. Well, he, he went to one. Yeah, but he, well, I think he I think he has a ring that I think he was on the bench for one of them. Oh, yes, yes. He was on, he was on the bench for the Atlanta game, yes. I think. So he was there. He has his ring because of Tom Brady. So there uh, that going back for it would be funny. However, I think it makes a lot of sense for the Buccaneers to try to go out and get Garoppolo. You're not too confident in this this quarterback draft uh, this year, and you do still have a roster that you have a roster that can compete immediately. We'll see what happens with Chris Godwin uh, and some other some other guys that might move on from the team. Uh, however, I think it makes a lot of sense to go out and get a veteran like Jimmy Garoppolo to try to run it back with the talent they have this season. Uh, you're Jacob. You're from Tampa. You literally just got out of your car on the the road trip down here from Tampa. So, what's the feeling in Tampa? What do you got? What do you think? Even though you're not a Buccaneers fan, what do you think the Buccaneers are going to roll out with next year? I I know that a lot of fans, they don't want Jimmy G. So that, that, that's a big fan sentiment. They don't want him to be the guy. Um, but again, the light bulb, you know, I just mentioned the point that would the Niners trade within the NFC? But then at the same time, who are the Bucs going to go after? You have all these quarterbacks available and you don't have many choices. Uh, but then I also think, what could they even give up? Because the Bucs, all three of their running backs are free agents. Goblin's a free agent. Gronk's a free agent, might retire. Marpet just retired. Two other O linemen are free agents. Uh, Sue is a free agent. JPP is a free agent. Where do they, what spot are they going to trade from? They already had a weak secondary. What are they going to give up? More of an O line? They have three fifths of the O line is gone right now. So I don't know exactly what they're going to say. Hey, San Francisco, you're going to take just picks. What NFL talent do you want? They're not going to give up any of their defensive stars. Nobody on the secondary is valuable. Are they going to give up receivers? So I don't see who they even have to trade. So are the Bucs going to have to settle with free agency? Are they going to have to take Watson on a lower thing and deal with that scandal? That's kind of the direction I feel like it's going to go. I actually feel like if any team in the league were to go for Deshaun Watson, it would be for the Bucs. Because I feel like if you're going to go from Brady, it would almost be a slap in the face to go to a quarterback that doesn't have the potential to be Brady. Uh, you know, because the Bucks organization before Brady, every year, seven and nine, eight and eight, nine and seven, but they never made the playoffs. Why? They always had a medium to mediocre quarterback. And I think if you go back to Jimmy G, you might be going back to that. I think Jimmy G thrived because he was in San Francisco with a coach that made him work. I don't know if Arians is that type of guy. Um, left, which is a great offensive coach, but he had Tom Brady. So uh, a lot of th these things go into it for me. But I actually think Deshaun Watson, if he's going to go anywhere, it would be Tampa. That'd make a lot of sense. I, I don't, I'm not even going to touch the Deshaun Watson it's thing. Tough. He's, he's not in my list anywhere. And we don't, we don't know. At one point you, th you thought that maybe he's going to be settled out of court. However, there's not been a lot of whispers recently. So that whole situation, I'm not even going to touch with a 10 yard stick. So I think, I mean, I think it's very likely that he is still on the Texans roster by the time the season starts. But if he, if things do get cleared up, the Buccaneers are a team that could look to go out and grab them. They're in a situation to win. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I think, I think, but I also do think Garoppolo does make a lot of sense. They very, yeah. not obviously not to the level, but just on paper, the things they do well, Garoppolo and Brady are comparable. Yeah. One's the greatest of all time. One's being traded, so let's be respectful while still saying that. But I do think it makes a lot of sense for Garoppolo goes to the Buccaneers, and it would make a lot of sense for him to go to this next team, being the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team that has a young roster that is developing that still made the playoffs with a bad Ben Roethlisberger with a bad offensive line. Najee Harris in the defense really did a great job to uh, carry that team, and they got through some wins like that last game of the season. The the last game of the regular season with uh, when they took on the, the Ravens, it was very clear that neither of those two teams deserved to be in the playoffs. Somebody ended up having to be, and it was ultimately the Steelers. But I do believe the Steelers are going to go out and get Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz is a quarterback that, at his best, is very comparable to Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger was more mobile than he in his younger years. However, I think him and 
Wentz are a very similar level of, of mobility. They're both strong, tough quarterbacks, both really good arms. Uh, Wentz does have the injury issue, and he does have the fact that he played for very poorly this, this last season. However, you're going with a situation where he had very little weapons, to you're going to, if they bring back Juju Smith-Schuster, they have, um, what's his name, Deontay Johnson. They have some They have some good weapons there. Najee Harris, uh, I'm sure they'll look to rebuild that offensive line. So I think it makes a lot of sense for the Steelers to go to Carson Wentz. And I think it also makes a lot of sense for them to draft Malik Willis. That is somebody who they've been, uh, there's a lot of reports, that, especially throughout the Senior Bowl, that they're really high on him. So I think the combination of drafting Malik Willis and signing Carson Wentz on a cheap deal makes a lot of sense to me. What do you think the Steelers will be rolling out with? Yeah, you know, originally I was with you. I thought Jimmy G was perfect. I still think it could very well happen. Uh, let you know, if, if the 49ers are looking to get Jimmy G out of the conference, Pittsburgh would be the spot. Um, it would be a very similar situation for him that he had in San Francisco, run first offense, defense first head coach that knows what he's doing, and it would provide essentially the same situation for Jimmy G. The problem is, I think Carson Wentz almost fits better. If you're looking for a Big Ben Jr., it's Carson Wentz. They're they're almost the same guy uh, in a lot of different ways. But again, then the other problem steps up that would the Colts trade Wentz to a team that theoretically they'd be competing with for a playoff spot? The Steelers are the team that took their playoff spot at the end of the year. And are they really about to give their starting quarterback to them? So that, that that's what affects a lot of these trades because some of these quarterbacks fit in like glue with some of these teams. But you have to think about the, you know, would these teams actually trade them to these destinations? And that's what makes this a lot of fun. Well, I think it's going to be so bad that I don't think, I don't think they're going to get a decent offer for Carson Wentz. I think they're going to end up having to cut him. And be, yeah. with that, I think is what will ultimately lead them to signing uh, Carson Wentz and then yeah. drafting Malik Willis. Carson Wentz is on a huge contract right now. Nobody really wants that contract, especially if you're at the give up picks on top of that. So I think it is going to be a situation where they use Carson Wentz as a, as a stock gap. And then who knows, maybe he does perform well. I think it's very likely they could sign him to a two year deal. And then let's say he performs well enough, then move him on for some assets and try to build around the, the young quarterback Malik Willis if he shows some some promise uh, moving on into his second season. So who would you say that you think the Steelers are going to roll with? Okay, I never really get this. <laughs> um, I think Jimmy G because I don't see him going to the Bucs. Jimmy G, that, that makes a lot of sense uh, for the Steelers. He's, he's definitely gone out of the 49ers. I, I don't think there's any chance he returns. Uh, to, to the to the 49ers. So it, it would make sense for it to be Jimmy G. Uh, the last quarterback that I would like to talk about, we've already talked about Daniel Jones. Uh, we, there could be some, there could, the Eagles could look to move off Jalen Hurts, but he did good enough last year with very little talent, with first year head coach. He, I think he's going to continue to develop. He's a smart guy. He's a leader. And if you have the personality and you show something I think teams are more likely to work with you and try to make things work. So I think, yeah, they made the playoffs with nothing. So on a season that was expected to be, you know, they were going to have three first round picks. They're still going to have those three first round picks. I expected them at the beginning of last year to use those three first round picks this year on Russell Wilson. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. So I think Jalen Hurst is going to stay, but the guy that I want to talk about that some people have talked about him leaving, but I don't think it's been talked about enough. And that's Baker Mayfield. I don't think Baker Mayfield is going to leave. I think he is going to be the Browns starter uh, next season. But the Browns have to be asking some serious questions about whether it's worth holding on to Baker Mayfield. They have a team that they could win now. And we saw them win seven games last year with a good offensive line, two great running backs. They had Odell and Jarvis Landry together. Jarvis wants out. Odell already forced his way out. And on the other side, you have a really good defense. Kevin Stefanski was the, the coach of the year the previous season. So what's the common denominator? Baker Mayfield. I don't think he's good enough. I've said multiple times, I would rather have Tua than I'd rather have Baker Mayfield. And come on, Jacob. I don't even think that's much of a stretch. It's close. You know, I mean, it's not a blasphemous state. I mean, just like I said about Jalen Hurts, Tua has the personality where you can believe him in him and want to build around him. Baker Mayfield, he's had personality issues stemming back to Oklahoma police chase 
uh, grabbing his junk on the sidelines. He's not wrong. <laughs> He's not wrong, though. Like, call me what you want, but okay, that's no, they're not. That was that was a that was what two three years ago. That was that was a fun period of time. Uh, no, I'm not going to go that far, but Baker Mayfield has had undoubtable character questions, and if his play backs it, I mean, we're seeing Deshaun Watson potentially get a second chance, and he's done allegedly don't sue me uh he's allegedly done some really terrible things not even just character wise but actually done some terrible things and there's talk of him getting a second chance baker mayfield has done some you know some questionable things police chase all that good stuff but he does his play doesn't back it the browns significantly underperformed last season and the browns just have a quarterback that could just make it work They should have been a playoff team. And they were my pick preseason to go to the Super Bowl to represent the AFC. We saw them. They were on the brink of beating the Chiefs. Ultimately, they did lose thanks to Chad Henney. But really, they could have easily beaten the Chiefs. And who knows what happens that next game with the Buffalo Bills. This last season, severely underperformed. And now I think they should move off them, but I don't think they will. What do you think? I, I'm in the exact same spot you are. It's just there's so many quarterbacks that are available that it's going to be hard to trade Baker and get somebody else. They're in a very tough situation with that. And uh, it's interesting that you bring this up today because it was actually uh, on Coward's show today to report that the ba- that the, the Browns. these teams are going to lose out and I think the Browns are going to look at this and say you know you got seven eight nine teams that means the price is going to rise for any of these guys we're just entering the game now maybe they just stick with Baker uh, but on the other side of the coin the Browns have one of the best total rosters in the league so they have a lot of capital that they could give up as well so interesting situation there I, I I'm with you though I think Baker ends up staying he does end up saying ultimately, but I would take a large look at what goes on with the Sean Watson case. Cause very soon you're going to have to pay Baker Mayfield. If you choose to, for him to be your quarterback and Baker doesn't seem the type of guy to take a team friendly deal to want to help the team. He seems like a guy to me. I mean, I'm not going to, I don't know the guy personally. However, I think he's going to, he's going to get what he can get. And he's not dumb. He knows that he's been underperforming. He knows that, He's not going to go out and get a lot of money on the market. And if he had accepted the offer from the, from the Browns before the season, I believe he was offered like $28 million or so. So, so yeah. And he, so he said no to that. And I think it's, I think it was, it was, it was dumb of him. And I, I think he's going to be the Browns quarterback starting next year, but I, I don't think he should be. Um, we're going to just quickly mention some of the, the NFL quote unquote top five uh top five free agents i want to run 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 through these really quickly so i'm just going to shoot a name out to you very quickly what do you think is going to happen jacob Devonte adams if rogers is there packers if not i think they'll actually respect his wishes and let him hit free agency and at that point he can go anywhere um i mean i'll just throw a team out there what team would make you know what i think chargers would make a lot of sense for Devonte adams Give Herbert another guy alongside Keenan Allen. That'd be uh, pretty nice for them. Chargers are currently sitting at second in cap space, so they have the means to do that. That would make a lot of sense. I think he's going to be franchise tag and stay with the Packers regardless of what's going on. Dirty. I I do believe so. I mean, they've been trying to they've been keeping Rogers hostage for a few years. Well, hostage for a few years now. They know they're if they if they have to move off of Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love needs all the help they can get. And what better help than the best receiver in the world? So I think he's gonna stay. That moves us on to Chris Godwin. Does he stay? Does he go? Where does he go? He's staying. I saw a report this morning uh from the uh Pewter report on Twitter. Uh he basically said along the lines of the deal is done, but not done yet, and Godwin's most likely gonna stay in Tampa. I'll take that. That's the only source that I've seen saying anything in regards to Godwin staying, leaving, going anywhere. That's the only information I've seen. I'm just going to go with that. I think he's going to stay in Tampa. I'm going to say screw your poor. I think he's going to the Jaguars. 
I think Trevor Lawrence needs the, all the help he can get. I think they're going to build up that offensive line. They draft ETN last season, so they're going to have the help in the running game. What you need is a star receiver, and he's coming back from injury, albeit. However, they have the money to spend, so I think it makes a lot of sense. sense too, yeah. Moving on to cornerback J.C. Jackson of the New England Patriots. There is some tension there that he's, he – it looks like he's saying that they don't – they don't trust him. They don't believe in him. So he could see the open market. Do you think he will? And where do you think he'll go? I mean, the Patriots don't like to pay people. So if there's a rumor of him leaving, he's probably leaving. In terms of teams with cap space, it's interesting because we could say my Giants, but it looks like they might trade one of their corners because they're kind of rebuilding. So I don't think they'll go out and get one after trading one. Um, teams who need secondary help, Tampa Bay Bucks. Uh, but again, what do they have to give up with all these free agents that are out there on their own team? So it's tough with corners because you could look at every single team and say, yeah, we could use him, plug him in. I see you have him going to the Chargers, and I like that too because, again, they're very similar to the Colts too. We have these rosters every year. Hey, we got the top three roster in the league, and they don't do anything. So they need to make these types of moves. Yeah, their defense is ultimately what cost them last year. We saw them lose games down the, down the stretch like to the Texans in that Raiders game. The Raiders didn't necessarily – the offense didn't necessarily play that outstanding with a just more serviceable defense, more serviceable secondary, especially. That Raiders offense doesn't have the best receiving weapons. You have Derwin James there at safety, but he regularly gets injured. So it's uh, – they, they do need to help on defense, and I do think that J.C. Jackson is somewhere they would go, someone who they would go with. Then moving on to offensive lineman Teron Armstead. I'm just going to put it out there. I think he's coming down here. Miami – desperately needs offensive linemen, offensive tackle, especially we've been rolling it out with Jesse Davis. <sighs> I, I, that, that name just feels gross off my tongue. Um, Austin Jackson got moved into guard, but he really hasn't found a home anywhere. Left tackle was mostly Liam Eichenberg last year. And, uh, you know, he, he could get thrown over to right tackle with this. I think that makes a lot of sense. The only issue is Teron Armstead does have an injury history. Those big boys, it's a hard time for them to stay healthy. So I think he's going to come down here to Miami. What do you think? That's an easy one. I like Miami too. Thank They've you. The Thank you. Space. They need all lines. It's natural. Yeah, it's. I think it's all about a slam dunk. I think the Miami Dolphins could look to sign two offensive linemen, maybe somewhere on the interior center, make a lot of sense. I really wanted to, to, to go out last year and get Corey Lindsley, and he ultimately signed with the, the, the Chargers and had a Pro Bowl season. And instead, we, we go out and sign Will Fuller for $10 million. Yeah, got to love that. Uh, so I think it makes a lot of sense for him to come down here. And moving on to the, the last of the top five being Orlando Brown. I think he stays. The Chiefs put in a lot of assets to go get him from the Ravens. You agree? Same thing, yeah. yeah. If you're going to give up a lot, you, you better keep it. Yeah, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. You know, you got to protect Patrick Mahomes where you can. Hopefully you can try to get a team-friendly deal there, but I do see Orlando Brown staying with the team. So this, this episode is going to run a little bit long here. Alicia Hayes will not be on her show. Uh, which is normally taking place at four o'clock. So now we're going to talk, we're going to talk about uh, the NBA. And I promise we are going to talk a little bit about soccer, which I try to do every single day. Uh, I come out here and usually doesn't end up happening, but the Miami uh, heat. Just to interrupt one quick update about baseball, like 10 seconds. Oh yeah. Go for it. Um, it's looking bad. <laughs> uh, two hours ago, it was looking good. Uh, now we're hearing that at five o'clock baseball is going to offer their players their final offer. Uh, take it or leave it situation. Yeah, Mer it's been, you know, I, I was talking to Glenn Geffner, Miami Marlins radio broadcaster. He called it a, a murder suicide. Cool. If this happened, if they actually lock out, and I completely agree with them, they can't miss games, but that's the only update that we're going to have for the show. Didn't you say literally minutes before we started the show today that a deal was going to get done and this was going to yeah. come to an end? Literally minutes before we went live here. Yeah, and now, you know, we, the, the, the union spokes, excuse me, the, the league spokesperson said, we thought we were close on collective bargaining yesterday, so we thought we were close, and then the union came back with a proposal that was, according to them, out of left field. I don't even want to go into it. It's just so dumb that, because the only thing they're disagreeing about now is collective bargaining tax. Uh, the union offered $100 million uh, for this number. The league is offering, I think, 20. So, there, I mean, this is a monumental gap. And you, you'd love to say, can you just meet at 50? Is it not that hard to do that? I guess it's too hard, but we'll see in the next hour or so. I've had such a disdain for baseball. Uh, you've had me on your show where you've talked about it before. I've offered very little in those conversations because, quite frankly, baseball 
doesn't deserve my attention. They don't do a good enough job at playing their stars out there. They don't do a good enough job at making their game interesting. It's true. It's, it's a very poorly run uh, sport. And with, I love so many different sports. We'll get to soccer in a second. I love all, I love all these sports. I want baseball to be good, but time in, time out, it doesn't happen. But, uh, sorry, Jay. Players are expected to vote no on the best and final proposal. So there you go. Uh, well, at least you might get Derek Jeter back. Yes. <laughs> I know you don't like him that much. I like him. All. What do you mean? I'm, 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 a I'm a Yankees fan too, bro. Yes. I, I, I mean, I'd like the Marlins. I, I would like them more if they were good. Kill me. But I'm, I'm a Yankees fan first because, you know, they actually try. Yeah, he's back home. Not yet, but he's going to be. Or maybe he can put together a package and buy the Miami Dolphins. I've heard some whispers of that. Him, Tom Brady, some other rich folks. Hey, hey Manning get in there. You never know. You didn't hear from me, but I, but I would love it. Uh, moving, on, moving on to basketball. We'll get through basketball and soccer very quickly. Miami Heat have continued a very hot stretch, uh, now boosting their lead in the East up to two games. I went to the game on Saturday against the Spurs, which saw the Heat win 133 to 129. Bam Adebayo had a great game after only ha- after having zero points in the first quarter, finished with 36 points. Both Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero finished with 27. It was electric. Head coach Mike McDaniel was there. Uh, Antonio Brown was there. Floyd Mayweather was there. The stars were out on Saturday night, in which we saw the Miami Heat win. And then yesterday, took care of business. Take took care of business. Jacob, can you speak against the number two seed in the East, being the Chicago Bull, Chicago Bulls? Tyler Hero finished with 20 points. Zach Levine led the way with Chicago at 22. Currently, the East is sitting at Miami at the top. Bulls are two games back. 76ers, three games. Cavs, four and a half games. Also, four and a half games, the Milwaukee Bucks. And to round out the top six is the Boston Celtics, who've been really hot of recent. So the top six for the East is looking really hot, whereas out West, it's kind of a mess when you look past Memphis. So the East is looking really good. One of the teams the East isn't doing too good is, is your New York Knicks. If you want to briefly just talk about the pain that Knicks have caused you recently, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I love how you had to, you put the top six teams and then the Knicks right under. We had we had to put the Knicks record on. And do you want to read what seed they're in right there? What seed are they? Twelve. Twelve. You know, one and nine the last ten. Yeah. This Randall drama. Um, I mean, I'll admit openly, I have not watched a second of NBA basketball this season. Uh, <laughs> I've pretty much boycotted the league ever since the, uh, the bubble season and the way that the players acted during that time. Uh, they're just all distasteful for me outside of, a, a, you know, Giannis and I like Kyrie. The other guys, they're just uh, prima donnas to me. Uh, they whine a lot. They get injured from minor things. Just kind of a weak league, weak minds. But didn't you just say you like Kyrie and that you're going on to complain about everything he is? Now, with well, I, with, with his I, vaccine stuff, like, you know, I, I support somebody standing up for what they believe in and all. How are, else he's a looney tune. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, check his check his yeah. track, track history before that. But, yeah, you're Knicks. Like you mentioned, one and nine last ten, four and a half games back of the 10th seed in the East. Just to get in the play-in tournament is a kind of a, a, a reach at this point. And Julius Randle – has had a bad year, but he's leading the team in every statistical category. I'm talking points, rebounds, assists. He's leading the team, and he's like public enemy norm- number one in New York right now. Yeah. Kemba Walker, you bring in, and he's only averaging 12 points a game. He's on the bench. I think he's done for the season, if, if reports are correct, that the Knicks are just going to sideline him for the rest of the year. Only the Knicks. And then you have R.J. Barrett, who what is a – Bright spot for the team. Averaging nearly 19 points a game. Had a great game against the Heat, which was a loss. But he had a great game against the Heat last week. So that is the one bright spot. Tom Thibodeau, does he last beyond the season? I don't think so. The Knicks are in a very bad space. And so are the Lakers. Lakers currently sitting at eight and a half games back of the sixth seed. Currently sitting at the ninth seed. One and five in their last six. Two days ago, they were blown out by the Pelicans. Getting booed at home. Russell Westbrook. What's the rest brick, Trash. man? Anybody listened to me for the last I don't know seven years has heard my opinion on Russell Westbrook all the way back, yeah, on that too. Thank you. all the way back to the original JK Sports YouTube channel when I was a junior in high school. Me and my friends were sitting in beanbag chairs and I was clowning Russell Westbrook, even though he was like in the middle of his triple double season. Yeah. My thing with him is he always been so inefficient, and his game always deteriorates at the end of the year. This time, his game just sucks. 
Like he's averaging what? He's averaging 18 points, shooting 29% from three. Russell Westbrook, they had the opportunity to move off him and they declined to do so. They had the opportunity to send him in a first for John Wall. Is John Wall any better? I don't know. I don't remember the last time I've seen John Wall play, but clearly Russell Westbrook isn't working and their bench situation is not working. They have Carmelo coming off the bench, averaging just over 10. Malik Monk coming off the bench, just averaging over 10. However, everybody else, you're getting very poor performances in which was another off season where we saw the acquisitions they brought in and we thought, oh, wow, the Lakers have put together a much better roster. Surely this is the year, again, they compete just like they did in that bubble season. And here they are currently sitting at the ninth seed, not looking like they're going to get any better. And now there's talks of LeBron possibly wanting to leave. As you mentioned earlier, Colin Coward, there was a Colin Coward was going on his show yesterday saying, saying the Heat should look to try to bring him back in the offseason and propose a trade of Tyler Hero, Kyle Lowry, Duncan Robinson, and three first-round picks. I don't think that's a bad trade. No. no. I mean, like, I mean, it's still LeBron James. I mean, I can hate on him all I want. It's still LeBron James. Um, he's obviously not who he was three years ago, two years ago. Um, but I can't crap on him as a player. So, I mean, anywhere he goes, he's going to improve that team. Uh, but it's, you know, you don't have to follow the NBA to see the drama that's going on with the Lakers. And I've loved watching it from the outside. Um, I think that, you know, the whole world's crashing and burning on LeBron from the outside. Does that impact his on-court play? I don't know. I don't think he cares too much, but um, he certainly doesn't like Russell. And I don't think anyone's really liked playing with Russell. It's never worked with anyone. Um, and, and the Lakers even thinking that it would work was questionable from the second they made the trade. There were other point guards that could shoot that were available and they didn't go get them. So very questionable. They're, they're dealing with what they paid for in Russell Westbrook, and that's a non-playoff team right now. Do I think they're going to rally and make it eventually? Yeah. I, I like If LeBron misses the playoffs in a 10-team play-in scenario, like I just don't see that. There's no way that that's going to happen, so they're at least going to make that plan. Um, it's not doom and gloom, but I know AD, there's a lot of drama with him. Obviously, Russell's not working. They didn't make any big trades. So they're stuck with what they have. It'll be interesting to see what they do. Yeah, and I do think if this season folds up like it looks like it is going to, I could. I do think it is a very big possibility that he could look to move off of the Lakers in the offseason. And the Miami Heat, I believe, would open with welcome arms. You're going to have Victor Oladipo. you got Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and LeBron James. As a Heat fan, yeah, I'm going to sell my soul. I'm going to sell my soul, give up on Duck and give up on Tyler, give up on those picks. Very quickly before we go, I'd like to give just a little bit of give a lot, little bit of talk to soccer. Anybody watching this on YouTube channel, I'm wearing my Team USA jersey. Last week I had my Manchester United jersey on. Uh, in the Carabao Cup, Liverpool beat Chelsea on penalties, 1-0. The penalties were 11-10 to 10 in favor of Liverpool. Controversy with the goalkeeping situation. Right before penalties started, Chelsea pulled goalkeeper Edouard Mendy for a Kepa. Kepa then went into the game to not save a single penalty and did not convert on his own penalty, which ultimately led to them losing the game. A really questionable decision, as we all saw in a few years ago, a very similar situation where actually Kepa was in the game and the Chelsea, the Chelsea coach then, Maurizio Sarri, decided to take him out. And Kepa said no and ultimately led the game. This time he comes into the game and loses the game. So... Liverpool win the Carabao Cup. Currently in the Premier League, Man City are still up top with a six-point lead. However, Liverpool is in second place with a game in hand, and the two teams do play each other on April the 10th. That is uh, Sunday, 11.30, April the 10th. And if Liverpool win their game in hand, it's going to be a game to who if whoever wins that game probably will go on to win the Premier League, assuming all goes as it's supposed to. Currently, my Manchester United are currently sitting in fourth place after a nil-nil draw to Watford, a team in Watford that we've seen Manchester United only pick up one point against in the two mat uh, matchups this season. So very poor performance there. And you got, you got to question Ronaldo a little bit. Ronaldo played very poorly against Watford at the weekend, got in the way of a, what most certainly would have been a Bruno Fernandes goal. And Manchester United currently sitting fourth place. Two points uh, above Arsenal, but Arsenal have three games in hand. So Manchester United in a very poor, uh, poor position. And you might see Ronaldo move off of Manchester United just after the one season. So Manchester United aren't going in a good direction. Hopefully, 
Hopefully we can have something better go out the rest of the season. My Florida Panthers and Miami Heat have done really well. However, pretty much all of my other teams are currently a mess. So Manchester United has a, a long way to go, and we still have a long way to go in the Premier League. So hard to say who will who will be the champion between Man City and Liverpool. But uh, that is the that is the end of the show today. Jacob, you and I now have some preparation due as our FAUL baseball team takes on the University of Michigan. Jacob, thank you very much for coming on the show today. Of course, man. I love being back and uh, let's go Owls tonight. Yeah, let's go Owls. Thank you all very much for listening. If you've been listening live, thank you for listening here on the FAU Owl Radio station. If you're watching on either FAU Owl Radio YouTube or my YouTube, thank you very much. Please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see me to, like to see me com- uh, talk about next. If you have any opinions on the quarterback situation that I uh, was talking, we were talking about earlier, who do you think is going to go? to certain teams where do you think Aaron Rodgers is going to go please drop all those comments down in the comments below thank you for those listening to me on my Spotify I'll have all the links to both my Spotify YouTube channel email everything in the description below and of course as always if you like to get into FAU our radio whether it be to commentate to make shows like this or just to submit clips maybe little t- five ten minute clips to put on this YouTube channel Uh, please get in contact with me. My email will be down below or just comment uh, down below your contact information, whether it be your email, your phone number, and we'll get in contact with you. But thank you all very much for listening. I'm Jake Kelly. This has been JK Productions. Thank you for listening. Hope you all have a great rest of your day. Take care, everybody.